see if we're going to go do that, I need your focus and attention while we're doing this. So we're not sitting on tables. Sit, on, sit, no, sit over there so you can write on the table. Alina, I'm asking you to sit on that side of the table so you have something that you're able to write on or get your freaking binder out because you've been in my room for five minutes and you have nothing ready. What I'm saying is the focus is on you because you're not ready to go and I am. And it's because you were being silly and sitting up on the coffee table. You had it. It's that red tape that came through. Oh, but then 823, which you have, I saw it in your stack. That's what we're trying to get into today. So, as we talked about on Wednesday, because that was the last day that I was here, um, we can reduce these situations, right? So, if we go quickly through these, Alex, Dale, what does A reduce out to? Yeah, so give me power form and then we'll do what it actually is. So it would be 2 to the power of 2 because we subtract these and that gives us 4. Because 2 times 2 is just 4. Xander, what about B? Do you have a Xander back for you? No, if I saw him down with these, oh, he's probably volunteering. Avi, what about B? Uh, B, so negative 3 to the first. Ooh, so either 1 over 3 to the first or as we talked about last week, Three to the, not last week, a couple days ago, three to the negative one. Because remember, negative powers are the opposite of positive powers. So instead of multiplying, it's dividing. That's why it's in the denominator. Simon, what about C? Okay, so what does it reduce out to? I'm going to get to, but this is really why, 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 why. <laughs> so the giant ones you're talking about here, 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 here. Just one, so what's on the top? Why what? Yes, y cubed. He even said it appropriately. We can say y to the third, or we can say y cubed. Now, if you'd like, drum roll, please. The difficult one. Alex, what's D reduce out to? Oh, my God. <laughs> That's it. Because x cubed over x, one of the x's reduces out. y squared over y squared completely reduces out. And this is just x squared. Henry? Oh, it's not. We're just reviewing problems that we didn't get to in the other lesson. Because we were trying to. Remember, we got delayed on Wednesday. So that was the last question from the Wednesday lesson. Not the last one I was trying to get to, but that's the last one from 822. So now we're in 823, actually. So pull out your 823 worksheet. And I think I had um, I think I had some class work on that one. Yeah, yeah I did some class. class. Oh, whole page work. Whole page work. So I forget where it starts though, actually, because I put them away. Um, it's, it's 73. Because I might skip. So, yeah, I, 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 picked, I picked and choose, pick, picked and chose. I don't know. Um, we're going to skip this just for sake of time. Two of those are wrong, two of them are right. So um, be careful that you read situations like that because two of those actually had errors. We're going to keep random carding, seeing how we're doing. Charlie, what's A turn into? Uh, two sevenths. Two sevenths? Like, no, two to the seventh. Oh, two to the seven. Sorry. Uh, yeah. Whoa! 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 
Bear, what's B turn into? Two, two to the third. Stop me if you have questions of what's going on. Uh, Serena, or we're volunteering down in the gym still. L E, what's C? We have to distribute the power to every piece in the parentheses, which really, those are terms. We can actually break these up. Well, they're, they're one term, but they're two pieces of the term. So 5 cubed is 125x to the 6. Guys, those of you who aren't paying attention, that's the mistake you're going to trip up on on the test. Like I'm telling you, that's where everybody trips. Audrey, what about... Which, do we have both Audrey's or just one for We have both. Okay, there it is actually you. What about D? This is difficult. Actually, everybody do D real quick on your papers. Take a minute. Because this is tough. I bet like half of us get it wrong. Unless we think we'll. Huh? No. It's on your paper. Do it on your paper. All of these are done on your paper. You should write them down if you weren't working with us. Like they're on your blue paper, guys. They're on your homework paper. Yeah. I told you to get out your worksheets. You are not allowed to be mad at me because I told you to get your worksheets out, and I literally just said this problem's on it. <laughs> How was that like planned? Is that like what your parents say? Yes. I'm not mad. I'm just disappointed. Yes. That's the worst. The real worst thing was when your mom says, I thought you loved me more than that. Or something oh, that like, just breaks your heart. <laughs> Alright, Audrey, can you help us out? No, wait, what happens with that X? The or are you going to come back to that? Yeah, I was going to combine that okay. with the other X. Oh, okay. So, um, did you so say... the X to the fourth power. So you said 4 squared times 5 times X to the fourth. Yeah, that's what I said. Yeah. Because yeah. yeah. this square distributes into the X and the 4. Now that we could really write as 16. Or you could write as 8. Because 16 times 5 then makes... 80, we can write this simplified as 80x to the fourth. Because this doesn't have anything happening to it, it's just 5x squared. We just carry down 5 and x squared, and the x squared joins <coughs> up with the other x. Because they're like terms. <laughs> Yay, like terms. Yeah, I like the word you multiply, like the number with the multiplying part, the same number with the addition next to it. Not like learning well. They, they, they put the exponents combined, not the base. The bases did combine. Four squared. No, well, no, actually, everything's a base. For the x. Like. So, make so if the variables are the same, they can go together. If they're not, they continue to be written separately. So we'll see a couple more situations where we have like x and y or x and z, and we can't put those together. But powers can still apply to okay. like multiple things. Alex, question. It'll have directions of leave it in exponent form or simplified form or that. And really, a lot of times, I'll accept multiple forms. Like, if you put this, it's not wrong, but we can obviously simplify these together because they're just both numbers. So, like, we really should. Well, not the x to the We don't know what it is yet. It's a term. It's a part of a term. We're assuming it's going to be a number. But remember, there are, uh, there are weird mathematical situations in the future where things are like unsolvable or impossible. Or... What, what else do you have to do with this problem? Imaginary numbers. All right. 
So this is where your learning of negative exponents comes from. So on a homework, on a homework, I think you had a table very similar to this, or I also forgot a table, so this might have been the table that I forgot. But so powers tells you it's like 10 times 10 times 10, which is 1,000. You don't have this on your paper, but stay with me for a minute. So 10 squared is just 10 times 10 or 100. 10 to the first is 10. We keep dividing by 10 to take that power down by 1. So if I divide by 10 again, we talked Wednesday about any number, anything to the 0 power is 1. one. Except for 0 divided by 10. So then if I am continuing this process of division by 10, this is going to be 1 tenth or 1 one hundred or 1 one thousand. Which really means 1 over 10 cubed, or 1 over 10 squared, or 1 over 10 to the first. Remember those negative exponents, what they really do is flip the base. So on your graph paper, because I'm over teaching now, you should pay attention because this isn't in your book, it isn't on your homework, and I want you to know it, because eventually you need to have it mastered. I just want to throw it at you right now so you've seen it. We talked about when we have a fraction to a power. And that power goes to both pieces and it becomes 1 to the third over 2 to the third. It goes to both parts. The same thing happens with a negative except, let's do this so it's a different fraction. The negative. The negative tells us divide by that thing. Right? But, but this is a fraction. It's not just like 10 to the negative fourth. I can't just divide by 10 four times. Like, how do you do it? Two thirds. Divide by two thirds four times. Like, that's really awkward. So we make it easier. Make it easier. This just flips the base. And this whole thing is the base. So this will become three halves to the fourth, which then becomes three to the fourth over two to the fourth. So when you have a negative power, sure, it means division. Or it means flip your base, because when we flip the number, we are inversing the operation, right? Times 2 versus times 1 half, when you flip the number, we've inversed the operation. That's why we can just flip the base, because it now inverses the operation like we want. So, is this because it's a double division, because fractions are just division? Well, divide, well, hold on. Yes, if they're proper, and yes, if they have a 1 on top, but a fraction is actually multiplication and division. Because, so I, I knew that was going to get a furrowed eyebrow. Hundred fifty times two thirds, right? We were working with two thirds on that screen before. That actually means multiply by two, then divide by three. Oh, so remember, yeah. a fraction is not just division. It's telling us two things to do. This is saying multiply by two, divide by three. This ends up being a hundred. But if we put a negative power on here. Let's say this actually has a negative second power. That's going to take my fraction and flip it over. Or if you want to see how this actually works, this becomes 150 divided by 2 thirds divided by 2 thirds. Ah. We divide by 2 thirds twice. But what actually happens when you divide by a fraction 
you multiply by its reciprocal, and that's how it actually becomes 150 times the inverted fraction to the actual positive power. Because instead of dividing by it twice, we multiply by its reciprocal twice, and that's why this happens. Patrick? Right, that is keeping close friends, though. Don't decimal form of powers. Trust me, don't decimal form of powers. What's 0.25 to the fifth power? Yeah, but can you do it in your head? Ha! What's one fourth to the fifth power? It's one to the fifth over four to the fifth. Right, like, it's the same problem, but decimals are more difficult. Do you trust me? Fine, do whatever you want. But if you trust me, I'm telling you, fractions and powers work easier than decimals and powers. Because Simon, what's the value of two thirds? Oh. As a decimal. Okay. Oh, well, okay. Good, keep going. I want the exact value. Okay, everybody else. So, you get ready to like, You know, I suddenly got you repeating five. Five would kind of sound like a mob of people saying, like, Die, 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 this table of patterns would do the same thing as we just talked about. Okay, I don't think we need to do this because it shows us the same thing. Two to the fifth, 32. We divide by two, divide by two, divide by two, divide by two. It keeps going. We just see it turns into division because as we reduce the powers, we actually have to divide to get there. So I'm not going to make you do that one, but we are doing this one. So. We are going to formally write this down on your paper. Now, we said, what about zero power? Patrick? So our answer here is yes. Yes, they all get the same answer. Because, please put a because. Because, let's talk about this. X to the zero power or 10 to the zero power, or two to the zero power, all kind of mean the same thing. It means however many x's you had on top of your fraction, you had that many x's on bottom. So like x to the third over x to the third, if we I'm use like the little trick, right, you know, I'm still explaining, right? If you stop somebody halfway through a, a like, baking instruction, you're not going to have a cake yet, right? right? You're going to have like a bowl of batter, which is delicious, delicious. but not what you want. So, so, are you with me on how x cubed over x cubed would expand to x, 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 and x, like x times x times x, it's repeated multiplication. Yes. Are you with me on a number over itself one. reducing out to one? And I will not say giant one because I know y'all will get upset. But then, if that reduces to one, and these reduce to one, and these reduce to one, it's actually one times one times one, which is one. Same thing with ten to the zero. Ten to the zero means how many tens I have on top. So let's say it's ten squared over ten squared. Ah, uh, that breaks math. So we'll talk about that in a second. But zero to the zero kind of breaks math. And then two to the zero, same thing. Equal number of twos on top and bottom. So whatever you need to write on your paper, this is going to be on your test. I guarantee it. Zero power will be on your test. Whatever you need to write to remember, any value for a zero power, whether it's a positive value, a negative value, a fraction value, a decimal value. There you go, Simon. It doesn't matter if it's to the zero power. It's one. So, 
zero to the zero, I don't have a definitive answer, which I'm sure you're going to love since I already yelled at you for sitting on the table today. The problem is that means we have an equal number of zeros on top and bottom. I know it's Oh, you guys don't have iPhones. Hey, Troy, do you have an iPhone? Will you ask Siri what zero divided by zero is real quick? Oh, oh my gosh! gosh. Listen, I don't ever uh, use no. Siri. I think yeah, I I'm not. Us probably, probably six, six, six must have worked. Okay. It was like um, a couple times while I was teaching, I was I just thought I would say something. You gotta be quiet. He'll ask you again, but you gotta be quiet to hear what it says. Logan. silly Siri answers. So, like, like Siri says, imagine. 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 I come in with a box of cookies. And you're like, oh, Mr. Hudson, you have a box of cookies. I'm like, yes, I have a box of cookies. You're like, how many cookies do you have? I'm like, I have exactly zero cookies. And you're like, well, that's an interesting number of cookies. And I say, you know what? Beyond that, what else I have is friends. And you're like, you really? You have friends? You're like, yeah, why do you have friends? And I'm like, but I have zero friends. You're like, that's a weird number of friends. I'm like, but my zero cookie can be shared with my zero friends. Here's where it all falls apart. I'm friends with myself, right? Now, that sounds lame, but I'm still me. So if I, hold on, if I have zero cookies, I have zero cookies divided by me. I'm sad because I have no cookies, but I have no cookies. This is nobody has no cookies. No one exists <laughs> to eat these. There's no one there, and there's no cookies. So since there's no one there, all of these people that don't exist get as many of these non-existent cookies as they want. <laughs> so, like, wait, hypothetically, does this equal infinity? Yeah. 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 No. Uh, no. So, any... Any division by zero actually breaks math. You cannot divide by zero. Because I have a quantity of something, I have it. To divide by zero, there's nothing. Like, there's nobody there. Like, I currently have zero pizzas. I have zero pizzas, I'm splitting them amongst me. Hey, Logan, you want to share some pizza? Great, thanks. We're sharing zero pizzas. Right? This works. We can share zero pizzas. We're both sad because there's no pizza, but we're sharing zero pizzas. I'll share zero pizzas with all of you. We're all sharing zero pizzas. But, but if I buy 25 pizzas and I share them with nobody, I have disappeared. I'm like, I have the pizzas, I walk out of Domino's, gone. It does not make sense. This, hold up, if we haven't talked about it yet, this equals, you want to say it? Well, hold on. What's the one word that explain, that is the answer to this, quote unquote? Do you know? Undefined. Undefined. This symbol, if you want to write this down, it's actually pretty important in math. That means undefined. It literally is the symbol that means, well, you broke it. Seriously, this means you broke math. It can't happen. Like, it try to divide by zero. It gives you an error. Logan, you want to try to explain? And you're probably going to talk way up here and we're all way down here. But Why zero error? Yes, 
on no switch the pen she's saying if you're gonna try to write Are you going to explain or just like stand there? Okay, so let's try to do this before we go. Alright, when you can write something out ahead of time and show it to me, I will let you present, but I think you're going to try to make stuff up and it's hard to make stuff up on the fly. It really is. Um, Alright, we'll jump in 279 now. This is on your blue sheet. On your blue sheet. Salvador's first question about the negative exponents came from science class. Where he learned that Ubinina's, I don't know if that's how you say it, measured 8.0 times 10 to the negative 2 millimeters. Meaning, this is tiny. Any negative powers mean it's really small. So what happens here is that power of your 10 is telling us what to do. So this, you should write this down, says left to your decimal, and this tells you how many. So we're going to grab the decimal, move it left twice, and this answer becomes 0 0.08. And I feel like a few of you struggled on your homework with this, and now it should make sense. It's super small on my decimal. Not super small, you are correct. It's still small. But it is millimeters, not centimeters, so it's pretty small. Pretty small. Could not see it today. Yeah, could not. Could not see it without a microscope, something like that. So, this is the difference between scientific notation and standard form. Standard form can write it as a decimal without times 10 to the. When they say put it in scientific notation, here's the trick that I forget if we've talked about that I'd like you to write down. Scientific notation. And you can abbreviate SkyNot. Sky Not SkyNet, but this number is this number is going to be a digit, one through nine, decimal point, as many digits as you want. The thing is, the one before the decimal is a single digit. Really, what we mean is this whole number is less than 10. The what there is to get is there should only be one digit in front of the decimal point. One point whatever, two point whatever, nine point whatever, doesn't matter. But 10 point, nope, can't do it, not scientific notation. So your book is gonna throw some problems at you and they'll be like, hey, 15.7 times 10 to the third. And you're like, oh yeah, times 10 to the third, that's scientific notation. No! This is wrong. What would be correct is 1.57, but hold on, times 10 to the fourth, because now we have to think about how would we get back, and I shouldn't be using the X, I should really be using the dot, I'm sorry. I fell into the trap. Scientific notation, a lot of times we use the, the multiplication X in scientific notation, I don't know why. Like at some point, mathematicians were like, hey, don't use the X to multiply. Unless you go to scientific notation, and then that's sometimes okay. Right? Like mathematicians did this weird thing where they're like, hey, you can use it there, it's okay, but everywhere else we're going to yell at you about it. Like, don't ask me why. So you should use the dot, but you can use the x if you want. Um, hold on just a second. So this number, I'd like I so you can actually understand why we did this, is actually 15700. Zero, zero, because if I move this decimal three places over, that's what this number is. To get it, I should have like everybody's eyes up here. To get it into proper scientific notation, we have to drop the decimal there like we did. But what we are then asking is how far does it travel to get to where it actually lives four places. So you will be asked to show on your mastery how to fix scientific notation that was written incorrectly. My advice, take it to standard form, then bring it into scientific. Because when it's in standard, we can just count. 
We need to count how many places. We're going to practice a few of these, Bobby. I'm really confused. Yeah, good. We're, we're just we're brand new at this. So, <clears throat> this. Um, <clears throat> sorry. The, oh, I love these problems. I have a whole book of things like this. The probability of being struck by lightning in the U.S., because it varies depending on, you know, like, um, varies depending on you know, the metal in the soil and the moisture and all that stuff. So, this, one, two, three, four, five, if we were to write this in scientific notation, is this on your sheet? Yeah, this is on your sheet. So this, you could even just write above it, it would be 3.2 times 10 to the negative fifth. I know I used the X again. Sorry, I'm trying to break the habit. Do you have AD down? Yeah, can I see it? Alina's saying it's more likely to get struck by lightning than when the lottery. Yes. Let's see if she's right. Yeah. So if we look here at 6.278. But wait, but wait, that's a bigger number. No, it's not. Because it's times 10 to the negative 7. So this power of negative 5 versus this power of negative 7 means this is a tinier number by approximately a hundred times because this realistically if we write it out is 0 0.12345678 and that's where my decimal was 278 because think about it count this with me because guys this is what you all are going to try to screw up not on purpose but to figure out how many zeros my decimal was here count one, two, three, four, five, six, seven spots it moved. So it actually lives here. Comparing that to this number, and it's crap I'm writing while you can't see it, this is way smaller. And guys, this is like genuine actual probability. Now, here's where they get you. And I don't think I have any lottery tickets right now to show you. The back of the lottery ticket will tell you your odds of winning are approximately one out of three point something. I could almost guarantee you any lottery ticket you buy will say that. That's the small prize. That's any prize. Yeah, so literally, not just the smallest, they literally all prizes possible divided by all tickets possible comes out to be about one out of three, one out of four. But guys, the smallest prize is what? you getting your money back. The smallest prize is I won not losing my money. Yeah. Yeah. Right? I won my money back. So did I really win? No. You can win like less than 20. Uh, I don't think the lowest prize is what you spent. I can't. Like, go, go, go. Go, go, go. Go, go, go. I'm not saying you're wrong. I, Right, because you have to be 18 to like sign it. Yeah. So, yeah. I won my money back. When I was a kid, the bowling alley let me cash in a lottery ticket when I was 15. What? I broke the law. I know. And actually, the lady behind the counter was like, oh, honey, I'll cash that for you. And she was How much was it? $2. Like, I won, I put in a dollar and I won two dollars. We were like, yeah, we won! We won a dollar. Like, yeah. Josh. Yeah. And that's what most people do is like, oh, I won, I'll just buy more lottery tickets, and then they lose. And then they were in the same spot they were. But this mentality is, oh, I spent a dollar, I won two dollars, now I'll buy two lottery tickets if I win on both of those. Like, there's this, it's like it's the this interesting, I want to win again mentality. Oh, yeah. Which is why I have a weekly like game night, and I just beat my friends at board games. Yeah. yeah. So, uh, I think, like, if you, you only are actually satisfied if you make three times the amount of the amount you spend, which makes it really hard no, to get I can out. scratch in the toilet five times. I know. I know. I know. That's what I'm looking for. I'm 
All right, look at this on your paper. Write these out in standard, sorry, fix these. If they're not in scientific notation, then you fix it. So ignore the question they ask. If it's not in scientific notation, fix it. If it is and you want to give yourself a challenge, write it in standard form. Like if it's right, write it in standard form. It's like, I'll go ahead and tell you, A is right. It is in scientific notation form properly. And if I wrote it out, it would be 0 0.0451. Because my decimal would bump two places to the left to get to standard form. I need to go back to random cards. Katie Ann! B, is it right? Crap. So how do I write this first number to fix it? So that's the question, is it times 10 to the 6th or 10 to the 4th? Four. So if we take the advice of Mr. Hudson and write this out in standard form first, it's 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, right? My decimal lands right here. So if I put the decimal here now, like up here, how far does it need to go to get where it belongs? Four. Here's the trick if you want to write it down. When you move the decimal right, we took this decimal, we moved it right. What happened to our power? It went down. So when we force the decimal right, our power goes down. If we force the decimal left, the power will go up. I'm endorsing no less. So, C is not proper. We are going to force the decimal left. So this becomes times 10 to the third. If you force it left, our power goes up. D, what do we need to do to that, Josh? Oh, yeah, to get back to standard form. Yeah, because I said if it's right, put it back into standard form. We move the decimal. Here's another trick. If it's written correctly, and Josh just said move the decimal eight times left, how many zeros am I going to have? Seven. Well, hold on. Eight if you count this zero, but I don't. We have seven zeros. Then the number we had. Oh, wait. Now, back to a discussion we had Wednesday. Wait, Alright, thank you. Well, yeah, her card was going to come back up. Here's a discussion we had on Wednesday that I want to circle back to. Significant digits. And we talked about numbers that aren't zero being significant. The other significant digits are zeros between numbers. So those zeros are significant if we're going to write that 8. We need them. That's why we write them. However, these zeros, we don't necessarily have to write them. We can just use the power to talk about them. And zeros that might be out here, those don't matter. These are non-significant because they do not change the value of the number. Unless there's another digit out here, and then they are significant. So you don't have to have it mastered, and you don't have to have anything memorized. I'm just trying to get you exposure to like, oh, if it's between two numbers, they matter. If it's not, if it's just the zeros at the end, they don't matter, they don't change anything. But if you have a number, Do these zeros change the value? Yeah. Oh, yeah, they do. So, zeros between a number and the decimal, a number and the decimal, those zeros are important. Between a number and the decimal, 
but if it's on the outside of the number out here, or I mean, if we're crazy and putting zeros out here, they don't matter. They're non-significant. Yeah, like two. Okay. Oh, I think that was just extra. All right. Um, do this on your own. Let's say two minutes is probably all you need. Logan, what happens to A? Simplifies to? Well, so what's the negative tell us to do with that second value? Yeah, divide or put that on the bottom. So we really have 6 to the 5th over 6 to the 3rd. Which, what's that become? I know you know this. Yeah, 6 to the 2, or 6 squared, or 6 to the 2nd, or 36. I, what about B? I'm sure you know what's on B for C. So what's the negative tell us to do? I should see pencils moving people. I'm worried that some of you are just sitting like bumps on logs waiting for this to get spoon fed to you and you're not trying it on your own. We don't necessarily have to use the giant one. We just think about it, right? We reduce out any of those. And we have two W, like W over W, giant one, quote unquote. And that reduces out. So then we have W to the third. And Serena, take us home. Sorry, I just couldn't hear the beginning. Yeah, it's 10 to the first because this doesn't matter that the negative value is second, quote unquote. This is 10 to the fifth over 10 to the fourth. This tells it to go to the denominator, and that becomes 10 to the first. So no matter where the negative is at, it'll always be on the one. So here's what this actually did. It made this 1 tenth to the fourth times 10 to the fifth, which becomes... Like, that's the same, right? This, 1 to the 4th is 1. 10 to the 4th is 10 to the 4th, or we could write it out. But either way, on the bottom, I get I get 10 to the 4th. On the top, I have 10 to the 5th. We reduce out to 10 to the 4th, or just 10. That's it. We could just add them together. Because remember, when they are multiplying, we are adding. Do this one. Uh, no, it's not on your paper. Let's do this real fast. We'll rapid fire. Liam, what's A? Six to the negative what? Yeah, six to the negative second. Yes. No. Because the reason we use squared and cubed is like the realistic, like you could square, like make it a square. You could make it a cube. You can't make it to square something. You know what I mean? So we don't say it like that. We just say negative second power. So these, one, 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 and I end up with two sixes on bottom. The six to the negative two, or one over six squared, if you want to leave it like that. Um, Patrick, what about B? Uh, uh, yeah, m to the negative first, or one over m to the first. And Audrey, what about C? 
Yeah, 10 to the negative third. So on your blue paper, do this. On your own, be careful. There's a dangerous one in part A. There's a dangerous one in part A. Actually, part B also. So you're volunteering for C? No. I heard you volunteer for C. Don't, don't worry. Someone else will um, be sad that they didn't get to do it. Yeah. Yeah. I'll even I'll I I hit the I hit this card again. Actually, just a couple cards ago. So I'll even just shuffle this last bit. No, but I hit the. We made it all the way through because I have a marker card now. Yeah. I've been random carding fast. Because we've already talked, sometimes I skip people. I know. I'm random carding, so maybe. You have a 1 out of 24 chance of doing one of these. Actually, you have a 3 out of 24 chance of doing oh, one of these. Oh, wait a minute. Oh, what? Wait a what now? Number B is literally already yeah, done. Mr. Dale, what does A turn into? X to the sixth. Power to a power multiplies. Xander, what about B? I don't know. It's, uh, it's up Get shuffled back in. Avi. Uh, uh, yeah, because this becomes 4 squared times 5 times X squared times X squared, which becomes 16. Times 5, times x squared, times x squared, which is 80, x to the 4th. I should write a little bit neater. And I thought we already did it back in the day. Yes, sir. Why is there a negative? To make sure we were paying attention. Because actually, I think we were supposed to get it wrong in the other problem, but I don't I don't do exactly what they prescribe. Logan, you're back up in the I just shuffled. What is C? Where are there more A's on top or bottom? Where are there more C's top or bottom? So you know C's will stay up here, A's will stay down there. How many C's will stay up here? Eight, seven, six. Eight, seven, six. Five, four, three, two, one. I know, people oh. like shouted out all these guesses and I heard eight, seven, six all like sequentially. Yeah, not eight. Let's go watch Mirabelle's fun. Yay! That's all we got for today. I don't know. Eight, six, seven, five, three, Necessarily. Um, so, I'm trying to think of like one of those sites.